Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, friend. More poems. More <laughs> poems. More <laughs> poems. That's not something people say. Also <laughs> joining us is one of our favorite people from one of our favorite podcasts. It's Erica Bromley from F This Movie. Hello, friend. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we are so. You already have me giggling. <laughs> no, we are so excited that Erica is here because we are dorking out about 1988's Cocktail. This movie has been on our list since Erica was on last year, I think, to talk about Can't mm-hmm. Buy Me Love. Was Erica, that a full year ago? Maybe, oh, Erica. More. You need okay. to come on more often than that. That's ridiculous. Okay. I can dork out. <laughs> if nothing else, I can dork out. I don't know if I have anything else to offer. <laughs> you have so much to offer. Uh, thanks. Uh, if, if y'all haven't seen Cocktail, you should just pause this and you should watch Cocktail. It's nineteen. It came out in 1988. It stars Tom Cruise and Brian Brown, Elizabeth Shue. She's adorable. Everybody drink. <laughs> And Gina Gershon, I totally forgot Gina Gershon was in this. And oh, no. yeah. and Kelly Lynch, who I also forgot was in this. I was shocked to see Kelly Lynch in this movie. Because I always see her as someone who's super classy and, and would be above this. And I'm, I'm surprised. But she was a young actress. Like, she's taking the parts so she can get, I guess. Right. Well, you know, yeah. you know it's funny that you guys say that because... I think I watched this movie maybe um, more than any human should ever watch this movie. (laughs) And I was way too young, too, like sneaking this in at my friend's house down the street. And I mean, we'll we'll get to all that. But anyway, so me for me, Kelly Lynch is always cocktail. (laughs) No, that's crazy. I know. I know. Everyone else would be like, I mean, Roadhouse and what else? She's in Drugstar Cowboy. Yeah. Cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, it's always cocktail. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. That's right. <laughs> we need to, we need to get into this because the reason we wanted to talk about cocktail was Erica super loves cocktail or, <laughs> well, maybe I, I she hate. super loves it, loves, hates it, has watched yeah. it a million times. And I'm curious what it is about. So obviously you didn't see it in the theater cause you're way young. Margo and I probably saw it in the theater. But I refused. Did you, I was ask did you? you remember? Oh yeah, I hated Tom Cruise in the mid '80s. <gasps> I didn't see Top Gun. I didn't see this. I didn't. I didn't see Born on the Fourth of July. Like I went through a good five or six years avoiding Tom Cruise films. Interesting. Passionately. Okay. okay. Until Mission Impossible, and then I oh. got totally on the cruise train because I. All t- right. I love those movies. That is. Yeah. I oh, was yeah. the opposite. So wow. we've talked about this before on the podcast. My parents had no concept of movie ratings. That meant nothing to them. They were like, whatever, just watch whatever you want. And so okay. my mom took me to a double feature of Risky Business and Trading Places. And I would have been 13, maybe, okay. when those came out, I think. And when I saw Risky Business, I thought Tom Cruise was so cute. Because yes. he's, he's mm-hmm. very, I don't know if people know this, Tom Cruise is very handsome. So <laughs> I had a huge crush on him. And it didn't last long, to be honest. He's not, like, really my type. But I did really like him. So I saw Top Gun. I probably really liked it at the, not probably, I did. I really liked it at the time. I saw Cocktail in the theater. I don't recall liking it, but I did see it in the theater. Okay. So, so much, I feel like so much of our, um, our personal relationships with movies come from when we first saw them, the, the, you know, who we were with, what the memories Mm -hmm. are on that, right. And especially when you're younger. And so I, I, I don't know, I, I was not like a teen beat, cut out the pictures and put them on my wall type of girl. Um, I did have like certain actors that I thought were actresses that I thought were very like, you know, good looking Mm -hmm. and that I liked them in a certain role, but I didn't like go too crazy with like, even when I was in grade school and everybody was like falling in love with um, new kids on the block. I remember just kind of like not (laughs) being into it as much, but I kind of thought Donnie was cool, but like, I just wasn't, I don't know. I wasn't, I was like, by no means was I like cool or a rebel at all, but I also just didn't like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just, it was like, okay, whatever. So I never, I had friends who would like 
cut out, right? And put up all the actors like on their walls and stuff, you know? Yep. And yeah. I, I read all sorts of magazines and stuff and I would keep them, but I just didn't get into like the hanging them. So anyway, the reason I give that little backstory is because something was different about Tom Cruise with me. It's like, I could not stop looking at his face ever. And I was like, <laughs> yes. And so, but I'm, I'm talking like grade school, right? So I'm so young. And, and so the first movie, I mean, Top Gun came out in 86, but I did not see it in the theater because I was too young. But I think as soon as it was available for home video purchase, right? I had a friend who lived down the street and her parents had a pull down, a giant pull down screen in their walkout oh style basement. That I mean, this was fancy. like, um, yeah, I was just telling this to Patrick yesterday. Like I walked to her house like every day after school, practically my mom would make me finish my homework. And then I'd walk down to Anne's and she had a pull down projector, the big, the big projector, you know how they used to have like the big lights. Yeah. 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 I don't. Yeah. So she had that. And then they had a giant VHS collection. And I think about this now. I don't think that she or her sister grew up to be movie loving people mm -hmm. who like wanted to own, right? But I, it, you, it was so obviously already in me at age like 10 that I wanted that sort of basement and I wanted to own the movies I loved. And it meant so much to me, even at that age, that she had this. I don't, she didn't care. It was like, she's just used to it, right? But I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Anyway, we watched Top Gun. Somehow we got away with it. And then we watched it over and over and over again. And so that was the start for me. There are moments in that movie. Well, that's a whole nother. Have you guys dorked out about Top Gun already? So Margo mm -hmm. just did an episode of Book Versus Movie about Top Gun. And it was her first oh, time watching oh. Top Gun. <gasps> oh, I, I was a very moody teenager and I hated certain things. So I hated Bon Jovi. Okay. Madonna. Okay. I don't understand Tom Cruise. This. Okay. And sushi. Those were thick things <laughs> I hated. And for dumb it. reasons, for very dumb reasons. That's and okay. I was very stubborn about it. But then, you know, because you're just like that as a kid. You kind of attach. I realize now it's hey. dumb to attach yourself to things you don't like. It's more important to just find things you do like and mm -hmm. take pleasure. Yeah. That's and a great way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. So I did see Top Gun for the first time. We did that for Book Versus Movie because it's based on a magazine article. And I okay. fucking loved it. I oh my God. You loved it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I love that you loved it. I, it, it's so funny. And I mean, there was an F this movie episode on Top Gun a long time ago. Um, where I, I, this side note, I tried to make cookies in the shape of like jets and planes and they came out <laughs> looking very different. So that's <laughs> a long run thing penis cookie joke yes. there but anyway um it was it was Patrick and, and Doug that recorded on that and Patrick kind of like hates it but Doug has this nostalgia for it and I, we all like as a group need to get together one day and dork out about that but have like Patrick's little like hate hating voice in our in our <laughs> corner <laughs> like, make us laugh because it's so funny um but yeah okay so Top Gun that's what started it with me though and then yeah I went back once I could like so I tried to see what I could that was like, so then Cocktail, once again, I didn't see the theater, but once I could see it, it was like, I couldn't stop watching Cocktail. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, Rain Man, okay, Born on the First July, Days of Thunder, I was really into. I won tickets off of the radio, Z95 nice. in Chicago, if there's any Chicago listeners. And I got to go to the drive-in movie and see Days of Thunder for free. That was super exciting. Um, I love that remember, it was for the drive-in. Yeah, it was so <laughs> But then I went back, and this is where I'm. I'm not going to name all his movies because we. I would love to though. Let's do. Can we just do a dorking out Tom Cruise one day? We totally. Oh could. yeah. Gosh. Okay. But here's where I'm going with this. Once okay. I found out that in all the right moves, if you He's pause naked. it at the right moment, you see his penis. Yes. <laughs> I did see that. And I rented it from. I don't remember if it was West Coast Video or Blockbuster. Those we pretty much just had those two really close to my house. Um, yes, rented it, paused it, took note, and moved on, you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know this, and now I'm over here writing down all the right <laughs> moves. It's a good movie. Pause. Yeah. Maybe it you could, best. could you give me timestamp so I could just yeah, fast we'll forward? Figure you know, I'm sure it's on the internet someplace. I'm happy to find that Mr. Skin, that's what I'm there for. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, that, and so cocktail for me, I, I don't, I love it, but in this way that it's like funny because I don't, it's a terrible movie, right? I mean, right. It's, it's so, it's so terrible. It's so dumb. Um, but I have just, just like this nostalgia for it. And 
I remember being on a, like a, well, I was going to say a small trip, but a small trip for my family back then was a, was a big deal. We went to Wisconsin Dell. So for other people, it's like, they do that every weekend. We were like, woo, we're going. So we went and we got to go to a one gift shop and like pick out a souvenir. Right. And my little brother probably picked something cool that represented like what we were doing and exploring and going on the the um the boats you know the what do they call them, the wisconsin ducks anyway here's what i picked out of the gift shop a poster book of tom cruise posters <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and i kept this for the longest time and i actually right now i'm thinking they are in my house somewhere they they're in here for sure that's i know amazing. Be, yeah I love so it. that's my start with cocktail it's terrible but yeah <laughs> it really it's, yeah it really is like a like a watered down cocktail a weak drink this movie (laughs) but it is kind of like top gun in that it's so incredibly watchable right like if it was on right now i'd be like yeah sure you can leave cocktail on like i would (laughs) i would watch it i have to say when i first when i first saw it i think by the time i saw cocktail i might have been more interested in brian brown at that point (laughs) Ah, i was such a i was such a weird teenager like, I love it. I I saw FX and thought it was awesome with Brian and, Dennehy and with our old man crush Brian Dennehy because I yeah. really liked oh. Brian Dennehy. So that's probably why I saw FX. And then I probably thought Brian Brown was really cool and I liked his accent. Yeah. So by the time Cocktail came around, I was like, Oh, Tom Cruise and Brian Brown <laughs> <laughs> and the girl from Karate Kid from Adventures oh in Babysitting. God. They made she... a movie just for me. She had a run. Oh my gosh. Like she's so adorable. But yeah. <laughs> she's so cute in this movie. That hair. I yes. love oh, her hair. I knew it. So I knew much. that I knew the hair was gonna come up because we did this yes. with Can't Buy Me Love too. How much did you covet <laughs> Elizabeth Shoe's hair? It's probably it's the only so... reason I ever got a perm. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's like lovely curls, but they're not springly they're like they look really soft and looks like she just kind of runs her fingers through her hair and just goes about her day and it's no big deal it's just like this natural beauty that she has that's just so she is not she's like a sunset yeah right she's and her face yes she really is so beautiful and she had such a run there right like um adventures in babysitting and like you said karate Karate kid Kid. Mm -hmm. um what else was around that time? I'm going to look it up because yeah. I was definitely like... Oh, well, like, Back to the Future Part 2. Yes. And 3. Oh, Soap Dish. Then you get to leave in Las Vegas and it's like such a such a turn. Oh, but Soap I, Dish? Yeah. I just always loved her. Yeah. Heart and, and Souls. Yeah. She, the black swimsuit that she wears in Cocktail, <laughs> I just thought it was so simple I'm like look it's just a black swimsuit it's so simple but she's such a babe like I was obsessed yeah. with black swimsuit I, <laughs> I wrote in my notes that she is like the most modestly dressed person at that resort like with yes. her like everyone's right. in like like nothing bikinis and a, she's a like bikini yeah and she's wearing a one piece around black bathing suit with like a wraparound which by the way right I, that's what i would wear and she right. she's so modest or they even go to like a bar or a club or something and she's wearing like a long yeah. sleeve shirt but it <laughs> but it has like no back or something but it was still sexy but i'm like right. she's so modest <laughs> right and then i mean even the fact that they they really like date right the way that it's cut together is like they're going on all these dates and they're really getting to know each other and and then we finally get to the waterfall scene oh my god that waterfall the scene. black swimsuit comes off <laughs> those sex scenes are so uncomfortable for me because oh <laughs> i don't i don't buy tom that and in top and in top gun i don't think he's great at sex scenes or it, yeah. it's it's a little yeah. i don't know yeah you have to suspend disbelief like <laughs> Right. <laughs> Although there's one shot of his hand grabbing her head in a certain way, and yesterday we were watching it again, and I was like, "Oh yeah!" And Patrick's just laughing at me. <laughs> about Tom Cruise's hand. Um, but yeah, no, the kissing is always weird. The kissing is weird. yeah, really weird. Should we talk about what the plot is? Oh, sure. that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we jumped right in. We jumped right. I mean, I first of all, because I forgot so much of this movie that that like 
he was in the army and his friends, first of all, they flagged down a Greyhound yeah. bus. Yeah. To get, I, I forgot a lot. Like, so the, the asshole entitlement of him begins <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> well, I was just like, he dude, why weren't you wants. on time for the bus? He I does what he wants, friend. when he wants. <laughs> yeah. It's all that matters, right? <laughs> and then he goes to Queens, and that's where he's really from. And then he's working at a shitty bar. And I know the, I could tell by the subway stops. I'm like, oh, I know where that is. And then yeah. Uncle Pat, Uncle Pat in the bar. Uncle yeah. Pat at the bar. And Uncle Pat's kind of a dick, but <laughs> trying to help him out. And he gets the job. He really wants to, he doesn't have a college degree. And there's all that series of him. We've seen this in other movies before, too. Like uh, The Secret of My Success. The, uh, yes. the whole, like, going on the list of job interviews. And you don't have experience. I can't hire you. You blah, blah, blah. And he just, you think, like, oh, that's so sad. Like, no, you need experience. You need yeah. a degree. It's New York. You know, I, what do you think? So, so 1980s. Those scenes yeah. are so 1980s to me. Like, yeah. Right? I wrote the same thing down, Margo, secret of my success syndrome, the uh -huh. like the whole multiple job interviews, but he doesn't seem to have any passion for anything. It's just, I want to no. get rich. I, I, yeah, he just wants to be rich. There's, I like marketing. I like sales. I like right. computers. I like Wall Street. It's just like he doesn't have anything to focus on. You, so, so, so go ahead. No, do you know what I I caught yesterday though that I had never really picked up on the the conversation in the bar with Uncle Pat. I think there's mention of something with like the old house or the old apartment and something about the mom or he rented out to the people. And Tom Cruise has this moment where he says, "Yeah, I still remember when they repossessed it all" or something yeah. like that. And I was like, "Oh, look, they're planting the seed that like so he grew up really struggling in a family." Yeah. With poverty, so that's like the motivation that he just wants to be secure and successful. And on that bus, when they're you know playing wild again, and he's on the bus, right? That's I'm like, what so is with this song? There, <laughs> so cool. oh my gosh! But he's on the bus. There's a shot from him of him reading a book that's called like How to Turn Your Idea into a Million Dollars or something mm -hmm. like that. I don't know. I don't. I might have it off, but it's like How to Turn Your Idea into a Million Dollars, and he's reading it very seriously, and his eyebrows go up like, hmm, oh, ooh, <laughs> I got ideas, and then. There's a shot, they're implying that this is a long bus ride, right? And there's a shot of him like holding somebody else's baby mm -hmm. and he's very content and playing. And I'm like, oh, look, they're setting him up. They're setting it up so we'll forgive him later when he makes all these dumb mistakes following his friend right. around and yes. hurts the women that he the women that he actually really cares about, but he does the stupid stuff. But they're kind of like showing us, okay, he was he struggled with money as a kid and now he wants security, but he's willing to play with the stranger's baby on the bus and entertain the baby. So he's such a nice guy. <laughs> like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of planning there. <laughs> There's a lot they're trying to do because this thing is dipped into misogyny, like nobody's yeah. business. Mm -hmm. The women in this film are treated horribly yeah. and every single one treated horribly by him. He demands that they give him a second chance or a third chance. And I mean, by, by bursting into their homes or screaming <laughs> at them. The entitlement right. of this prick is so upset. This is what I hated Tom Cruise, because I felt like, I think he's really like that. And it's not, I'm so I'm not going to see your movie, Mr. Cocktail. No. But he, he hooks up with Brian Brown, and he becomes a, a, a waiter, or, you know, bartender, excuse me, overnight. And you figure he grew up in bars and stuff. He would know how to sling some drinks, but apparently, no. He no. didn't know how. Did you see Ellen Foley, by the way, with the big hair? Yes. The big, she's a blonde with that yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's the one that says meatloaf. she is a bitch. She is right? a bitch. Yeah. Right. Because right. that's a funny line. Uh, <laughs> but she, uh, she sang with Meatloaf on all those early Meatloaf albums. I didn't know that. Like Paradise by the Dashboard oh, Light. Yeah. I, she okay. has a fantastic singing voice. Okay. They yeah. should have had her sing. They should have. Damn it. I mean, that would have been incredible. But he immediately becomes a better bartender. Then they do the whole thing where they're flipping the drink. And everybody says, like, do New York City bartenders do that? I'm like, no. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's not a thing. These it's bars not a are thing. so to me, it's like I and, and I maybe I'm totally wrong, but in my mind as a kid, even, it was always such a middle upper class idea of what like middle upper class New York people are like that they go to these bars with poetry and, and right. such a you know there's <laughs> every type of person and an artist and the whatever and and yeah that they I don't know I'm like is this real does this happen like the guy who no. says I've got the best saloon in town you're gonna work for me and then cuts you cell block where it's so serious and dark and the blue light and the poetry 
I, no I New Yorker would sit through that poem. <laughs> that guy that holds the briefcase says, I'm a yuppie and a poet. He, they kick the shit out of him. This is not, <laughs> there's no reality here. I mean, it's also like a gigantic spot. Like, you just want to keep those people drinking. You can't stop the the momentum for poetry. But of course, right. Tom Cruise becomes a bartender quickly. He also becomes a poet quickly. So he immediately has his own poems and yeah. he attracts women. And then so he that's when he gets Gina Gershon and their sex scene is so like, what are they doing under that bed? They fly <laughs> off and <laughs> literally, literally rolling in the sheets. And that yeah. was Oh my gosh, a moment when I, first of all, the song that's playing during that sex scene is, um, oh my gosh, what's it called? Uh, we know it. For, uh, all oh. shook up, all shook up, but like Rye Cooter, right? Okay. I did and not own the soundtrack, I'll be honest with I you. I so. owned the soundtrack. I, I Young bet you did. Grade school Erica owned the soundtrack <laughs> and it's terrible. It is terrible. But like, I think my mom was digging Kokomo because every Ooh. mom like was like Kokomo, and mm. Don't Worry, Be Happy was a huge hit at my grade oh, school. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, oh my gosh, yeah, that was, that was, just huge. I oh my god, I remember the cassette. But yeah, so that sex scene, I remember my parents had this on once again when it was either on cable or VHS or whatever, and I was watching it with them, and they. I thought they knew I had seen it down the street at Ann's house, but I don't know. Um, and we're watching it, and that scene comes on, and all of a sudden they're like, Erica, go upstairs. Go to your room. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> and they don't show anything. They're just literally rolling around in sheets. It's like, And she's screaming. Wow! Yeah. Wow! But not in, like, a hot way, because I don't know. No. Like, sex going on. It's just like, ha-ha, tickle fight. That's yeah, what they I'm said. Like, he, was, he was tickling her under the sheets, and that's how they fell out. Because I mean, I'm super oh ticklish, too. So it, that, yeah. probably, it, it makes me uncomfortable. To me. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanna, I will say, though. No, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I the those both the bars, the first one, the what is basically a TGI Fridays, right? And then is, the second yeah. one, Cell Block. Um, I wouldn't want to go to either of those bars. Not even now where I like kind of miss bars because we're in the middle of a pandemic, but I wouldn't want to go there. And if they were doing the whole show, I'd kind of be, it, it's almost like, I think we kind of texted about this where I was like, oh, this is like, if they added a magician, it would be like my worst nightmare. <laughs> like the idea that, first of all, it's super crowded. And then they're like performing for me while they make my drink would make me super awkward. I'd be like, just, oh my just gosh. can I just have my drink? Like, please, yeah. you don't need to do the thing. Yeah. Just, you could just pour it in the glass and scoot it over to me would be awesome. Like, I don't, right. want, about I don't want the whole, eh? And now I'm doing the hippie, hippie shake. What do you think? Oh, like, and those I don't... drinks taste terrible because they're not measuring a goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> they're just but, such pros. They don't need to. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And then the, the addicted to love thing, you know, it brings the volume down and everybody sings along. Oh, my, oh my gosh, God. right screams 80s it's so so 80s yes. so gina gershon owns the brownstone that she lives in and then brian brian god his friend doug that's his name doug coughlin yeah he's he's supposed he's older and he's supposed to be wiser and he's supposed to be like a mentor but he's always Tom drinking Cruise. raw eggs don't drink and raw eggs no, my friends. it's bad for you well you know he's he made a lot of poor choices in his life yeah. so why tom thinks he's the mentor i don't know yeah. Maybe they're right. just the only people that hang out with each other. Right. Well, I mean, I guess I was going to say, I guess I have seen people in real life do that, right? I'm even thinking yeah. about, like, how easily people fall for stuff on the Internet oh, now. For sure. You know, yeah. like, it's just like that was sort of like the real life dude who's he's trying to sell you his, like, self-help book that is in his mind, you know? like Right. <laughs> well, he's trying to sell Tom Cruise on his, like, on his life. He's like, I made the right, right. It's almost like he's he's trying to convince himself by trying to convince Tom Cruise that he's doing all the right things and that his life is super awesome. That scene. So after, though, Tom Cruise goes home from Cell Block with Gina Gershon's character and they have their wild rumpus and their... <laughs> they have their tickle you know, fight. <laughs> yeah. Rolling in the sheet. Um, he actually likes her. And he wants to, and then they, they're dating and he, that scene on the basketball court where Tom Cruise is like, no, she is not that kind of 
girl and he, he was like really defending her and seems so it's like there's a turning point too where um doug then says well i'm gonna win my better i'm gonna show him that women can be it's such a it's such a i think about it now it's really it's so gross it always yeah. made me even as a kid i was so grossed out by doug doing that like you yeah. intentionally lied to her about your friend to get her on your side and then you sleep with her and then kiss her in front of Tom Cruise at the bar yeah. to win your bet, but more even more so just to be right, just to show that you know more or that you're the wise one. Like I know women. Women will women will mess you up, you know, like you don't want to go in for love. You want to just date one later for money, right? Because that's what he's doing yeah. eventually. Right. Um, but it's so gross to me that I, huh. It's super gross, and Tom Cruise doesn't learn anything from it because, gee, right. gee, it really sucks when people cheat on you and dump you, or, and then he just does it to and adorable. For a bet. Yeah. yeah, for a bet, yes. for the stupidest reason ever. The stupidest the, uh, thing. So for like fucking randoms stupid. at the bar, at the beach bar, these randoms. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. It's so stupid. Uh. Well, so then they go to Jamaica. It is Jamaica, right? Yeah. That's- Okay, and they go to Jamaica, and Tom Cruise is a very popular bartender, and they're meet cute as Elizabeth Shue shows up and says, "Hey, my friend's dying on the beach. Help somebody <laughs> so help me!" Weird. So, so he weird. just jumps over, and and he doesn't give her water or anything. He just kind of looks like she's all right. She's all right. Just call an ambulance. Yeah. And, but but Elizabeth Shue is so gorgeous with like her her sun kissed fit tan and her hair mm-hmm. and everything. And so she shows up the next day to thank him. And then they start their little romance and they look cute together. I mean, they really look, do look, you know, like they're having a good time, but that's when yeah. Brian, yeah. But then Brian Brown shows up and he's like, oh, right. I could screw up my friend again. Yeah. So, but he also shows up with a wife and it's like, he acts like he's just like uh, so downtrodden because he, he got married. We got married to a rich woman. So he's finally giving up his freedom for this. And it's like, it's Kelly Lynch. Like, Who's better looking than Kelly Rich? Like she's she's all that and rich, and she loves you. Yeah. What are you bitching about? Right. Did she love him? Are we supposed to think she did love him in the beginning? Yes. And then okay, she, but by the end, know, she's like, "Why would I want to be with one man? How can you expect me to?" Right. Yeah. But but because I guess in the beginning, hates yeah. women. This right. movie hates women. It's all the Madonna whore thing. There's no oh, in between. Yeah. You know, Tom Cruise, uh, of course, cheats on Elizabeth to be with this older lady who's only like a few years older than him, but they right. make it seem like this big right. thing. But right. he goes back he to New York. He doesn't even like her. He just, it's to no. win the bet. And then he, of course, feels like shit. But like, it's like, no, Elizabeth Shue, because Elizabeth Shue could smell Doug's bullshit right away, mm-hmm. which yeah. I did like. There's very subtle like reactions when she's sitting at the bar and he's talking and like, you know, making those comments to Tom Cruise and, Elizabeth Shue's face, they just, she's on the side of the screen and her reactions are so subtle, but so great. I thought, mm-hmm. you know, like you could just tell she gets it and is not into it. She's smart. Yeah. Until the end. Uh, yeah. Until the end. <laughs> Shouldn't have been on birth control, but okay. So she goes to, they go, so Tom Cruise goes, ba- dumps Elizabeth Shue, goes back to New York City lives with this woman who's doing aerobics at like seven in the morning, <laughs> like all these eighties things. Like I'm yes. just like, holy shit balls. And my mom used to work out to that tape, by the way, it's Kathy Smith, low impact. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. <laughs> I remember. My blockbuster that I used to work at had a lot of Kathy Smith. <laughs> but um, so she doesn't give him a job right away, which puts him out. You know, he wants to be, he wants him to hire her, like her to give him a job, but, He's he, instead he's like her escort to things, and she has him hold her coat or something, and he acts like an asshole to the sculptor and gets into a fight. I didn't think Bonnie deserved thrown... this. No, and she winds up apologizing to him. You know, he throws a fit. He ruins art. I mean, it's not great art, but you know, that's <laughs> what is the problem? He's like a man child. Gets outside. Oh, he is. He's, he's like, like drunk, squatting on yeah. the on the on the sidewalk, like blah blah blah. You know all this crap. <laughs> she starts apologizing to him, That's crazy. and then he gives her the key to hit the place. Like yeah. I'm dumping you now because I got to do it on my own. I'm like she should have thrown, kicked the shit out of him, I kicked know. him out. <laughs> Although I did get the impression that she kind of like because after their little tryst down on the beach. Um, you know, when he's all upset that Elizabeth Shue flew back to New York in the middle of the night and he's just kind of like, 
you know, lying in his room and she comes in and she he's he's like eh, you know kind of just talking or whatever and she like oh you what did, what did she say she's like what have you done to me i can't you can't let me go now or something i don't know so yeah. it's like she wanted this little boy toy play thing yes. but then didn't like when he acted like a boy toy play thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> what were you expecting exactly you know true <laughs> But even all that stuff at the art show was like, to me, again, as a kid, oh, this is so, like, 1980s. Even yeah. I was just, like, so hyper aware of it, even though I probably didn't really know what I was think thinking. You know, I didn't know enough right. as a kid, but it just it made sense to me that... It's like, oh, we're looking at the the rich people at the art show and like the way they depicted everything <laughs> was just so exaggerated, right? Like Yes. Right. Oh my it's God. super exaggerated. I'm sure uh, well, maybe Margot goes to art shows like that all the time. Do you, Margot? Tell us, Margot. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped going because fights kept breaking out. And it got me very uncomfortable. <laughs> Inevitably, Bonnie shows up with her boy toy and a fight breaks out. Damn it, Bonnie. You can't even look at the art anymore. No. It's too aggressive for me, too aggro. It's just artists flying around, being pushed around. You know it's what? so absurd. We passed over when Doug gives Brian Flanagan his idea for Cocktails and Dreams. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> that title. Cocktails I mean, and Dreams. What? What? I, I have to at least give the movie credit that at the end, when he has the neon sign, spoilers, sorry, yeah. everyone, but at the end, when he does have the bar, it's the neon sign in the window, but it's not actually the name of the bar, which I appreciated, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, it's called, it's like, just Flanagan's, Flanagan's or whatever. Flanagan's, yeah. which, you know, you've got that Irish last name. It works. There's probably a Flanagan's in, you know, every town, but... Uh, That's true. <laughs> right. But at least it was just the little, like, sign and not the name of the place, because, like, oh, my gosh. It's a terrible <laughs> name. It's I'm awful. So oh, I'm well, glad they didn't name the movie that, although it's cocktail much better. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> but they, so he, so he comes, so that's when he's starting to look for Elizabeth Shue again. And like everybody's yeah. in New York, right? So mm -hmm. he's looking for her. Turns out she's really, she first she lives in a, she's working at her job. He's annoying her there. She's a waitress. Mm -hmm. So then she dumps a bunch of food on him, which would get <laughs> her fired in a second anywhere else but in new york we're supposed to be like aha that's just how she hit characters then he's like, yeah that's he new comes york back, that's new york for you what are you gonna do so she comes <laughs> so then at the end of her shift he's all cleaned up again he went home and that chicken chop suey's off of him yeah and then she's like he's like i gotta talk she's like no gotta talk to you no she goes all right fine walk me home and take me to my apartment where i live alone right now <laughs> what could go wrong <laughs> <laughs> she takes her to her loft it turns out she's an artist i mean there's big paintings and stuff mm -hmm. but yeah she, well, she drew she, didn't she draw him on the beach yeah she draws she a, drew a couple things yeah, yeah she drew a picture of him on the beach and he, then they have this whole like that doesn't look like me and then they wrestle there's a lot of wrestling in this movie. a lot of wrestling yeah she had on some like wide leg pants over her black swimsuit during that <laughs> <situation>. <laughs> I think that was the only swimsuit she brought with her there, if I'm thinking correctly. And in the waterfall scene, when they're doing it, she throws it on a random rock that's part of the waterfall. <laughs> yeah. And my thought is like, well, hopefully it'll stay there and she can grab it. But when he takes off his swim trunks, he literally just like throws them up. And it's like, that <laughs> is gone. That is in the That's it in the for you. In the ocean, wherever they, like, that's gone. You, you're not getting your swim trunks back. So, but hey, Elizabeth Shue, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, okay, wait, we were yeah. back in New York. Yeah. No, no, so she's, so she, they have, an, they have an argument. He's like, take me back. I had to cheat on you because it was a bet. Don't you get it? It was a bet. Please forgive me. You got to oh forget, like super aggro. And she's like, get the fuck out. I, he gets yeah. out. I wrote in my notes. Finds, go ahead. Sorry. He, I wrote in my notes. Like he says, it's not as bad as it seems. And then he describes it. And I was like, dude, it's so much worse. It's so much <laughs> worse. Like, oh, I'm wow. like, you're such a stupid asshole. <laughs> Like he just is trying to prove himself. That's it's so sad. Sorry, it's Margo, so I interrupted you. No, no, it's okay. It's like I, I, I'm also like recounting this to myself because I can't believe this is all in the same movie. But <laughs> turns out, I know. <laughs> there's so much going on here. There's so so much more to come too. <laughs> exactly. So somebody, so she, he goes back to confront her again to demand that she take it back. And her artist neighbor is like, she's not there. 
She's with her parents. Want to know what the address is? I could tell you right now because you're just some guy that won't go away. That's a good idea. Yeah. And nice so neighbor. he goes, great neighbor. So he goes to 67th and Park, which is a very Upper East Side, she, she addre up address, and bullies his way into the elevator up to her penthouse apartment, gets into a fight with her dad, demanding that she come out and meet him, demanding that she see him. He's still entitled. And the dad gives him a check for ten grand, which was not a classy move. But oh, was by it dad, we I thought it was shit. twenty-five, but I, I think, think I'm 10. wrong. Ten. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, that. That's not that much money. I mean, no. it's a lot. I would love to get that money for free. But thinking about the way that they were making them seem so rich, right? Mm -hmm. And right. even the actor who plays him um, doesn't he look like lifestyles of the rich and famous? Yeah. I thought oh, that was like, oh he looks like, like Robin Leach. Yes. Yes. yes he I, I just does. thought that was I wondered if that was intentional. So like with all that money, it's like ten thousand. That's it. <laughs> and Elizabeth Shue winds up getting mad. Look, it, the men have to make all the choices for the women. The women aren't given any agency over themselves at all. But so Elizabeth Shue's now mad at her father for bribing this guy, her dad, who's been taking care of her, and it turns out she's pregnant. Yeah. And from their magical waterfall. <laughs> Water, waterfall <laughs> sex will do that to you. Yeah, it, it's true. Well. She might have been on birth control, but there's no, you can't fight that. <laughs> you can't Don't fight that. Don't go chasing like, waterfalls. Yeah, right. when, yeah. When Don't you go have, chasing waterfalls. When you have waterfall sex, birth control just, it fails. It, it's yeah. one of the things. It's one of the well, side effects. it causes effects. twins. <laughs> yeah, it causes <laughs> twins. <laughs> but she takes him back remarkably quickly like forgives him remarkably quickly but there's also the thing with brian brown like now he's living on a boat and he and his wife like she wants an open marriage and he's throwing her to hit like him to her like go go fuck her because she really wants you to do it and she thinks you're really good at it and then tom cruise feels cheap oh no i'm not here for that so then he takes off and he's going back to paul is his name doug excuse me doug yeah and then Doug dies by suicide. This, oh. man, this movie's so weird. <laughs> it's so it gets dark so, and weird. It's so dark. Yeah. And at that moment, I'm like, oh my gosh, remember the, when this was cocktails on the beach? And remember this <laughs> when this was supposed to be like beach supposed boy. to be young guy trying to figure out his life. And then it was waterfall sex. And now we're in this dark, yeah. dark, you know, houseboat. And when they there's like a, a cut from when he finds him and he's screaming, I th it, help, help, and he's screaming. And then it cuts to like the back of the corners truck, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just that moment, like, oh my gosh, imagine being the audience, summer of 1988, this movie that I <laughs> right. mean, it was just the most gigantic hit. And all of a sudden you're just brought to this part. I just, to me, it was like, wow, they really got a, a, away with a lot. I don't know. Like, this movie yeah. cocktail. Is, yeah. So let's go back to 1988 you couldn't get away from that fucking song kokomo it was everywhere <laughs> right everywhere right. I, I i really really hate the song when i it comes on the radio i want to drive off the bridge Jamaica. no Ooh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so but, oh you see, but the video was all the time too and it was like the beach yes. boys and like yes. john stamos playing the drums and yes. like women yes. in bikinis and you know you it see that hair. and it's oh, it's for, it, for uh, I don't ever. I don't know. People loved it. They did. No, they did. Like, they did. Like my mom and my aunts are still like probably like Kokomo's a great song. Like it's right. ma it's made for them, and that's that's fine. I just don't like yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, not, think about the, It's not for me. Do you remember you Sonia? Back with that. Um, do you remember Sonia? I don't, I don't. I'm, you're not a football fan, right? You weren't into the 49ers. Mm, the 40 I, no, I know what the I know who the 49ers are. In 1988, <laughs> 89. <laughs> They were amazing. Yes. It was Joe Montana, Jerry Rice. Like, they were a big team full of stars. And somebody took the – when they went to the Super Bowl, I guess it would be in 89, somebody took Kokomo, and they called it Go Joe Mo. And it was oh. a whole pride thing about the 49ers going to the Super Bowl. Oh, wow. I feel like we need to find that. I, I, I think I'm going to have to go to YouTube to find it because they say when you get something stuck in your head, that's the only way to get rid of it is to listen to it a few times. So I think I have to because I've been thinking oh, about man. that. It just popped like, go Niners, go Jomo. That's so, <laughs> wow. no, no, Marco, why do you do this to me? 
<laughs> so, that might be cornier than the Super Bowl shuffle for the oh, 80, yes. 586 Bears, because at least yeah. that was original writing. Yeah. I love the Super Bowl shuffle. I think that's fantastic. I like the SNL version where it's just yeah. like all the kickers and they're like, we're kickers. We kick the ball. We kick the ball. <laughs> So my my point was that video was like a trailer for the movie that was on every hour on the hour on MTV and right. VH1 and all of that. And it looks like this kind of romantic drama, you know, with like yeah. they're frolicking on the beach and aren't they in love? And then for some reason they're not together and then they are. And then you see the movie and you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like. Right. It's depressing. It yeah. just gets so sad. And then there's the funeral scene, and then he's back at the at Pat's bar in Queens, and he's trying to figure his shit out. Makes and him then, really realize what's important in life. Yeah, it, it, he does. Which means he's <laughs> got to go back and harass Elizabeth Shue, <laughs> for, and then and and not and marry her. Yeah, and they get married in a bar, which I'm sure her family was thrilled with. But well, she's they just on her own they now. They disowned she was her. Rebelling. Yes. Yeah. And Ellen Foley showed up for the wedding, which I loved with even bigger hair than she had before. Yes. Which always makes <laughs> I me happy. <laughs> I just puts a smile on my face. And yeah. that's when she whispered, he does a poem, because we needed one more goddamn poem in this yeah. movie. By God. <laughs> and then she's like, I bet I could I could freak oh, you out right now. And then she says, the last line of the poem. And I promise I'll never get spooked again. Right? Yep. That's the last yeah. line of the poem. Yes. I I bet I could spook you. I bet I can spook you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then he just goes, twins? Oh, twins! Wait, doesn't he say, drinks are in the house? And yeah. then the uncle's like, no. And then, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but all of last night after watching this, Patrick and I kept saying, the bar is open. Yes. Yeah. Is that yeah. really the, the last line? The, the bar is open. And then, yeah. yep. like, that's it? That's a black? Yeah. Or what? Yeah. That's it. Because I'm replaying it in my head going, wait, the bar was open. Wasn't it open? Isn't that the whole point? They're all yeah, there. They I were know. already there. Wasn't the bar already open? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, also, it's just such end. a weird ending for a movie <laughs> that has a suicide. And like, hey, right, right. yay, the bar's and open. Before yeah. we got to that houseboat part that led to kelly lynch's you know reveal of wanting to not be with just one guy and then the suicide before that part it was like okay all this stuff has happened and oh there that's still coming i cannot believe that's still coming in this movie there's yeah <laughs> yeah roller coaster there's <laughs> there's also a thing where like she the wife brian brown's wife sends him the letter that he wrote to brian before he killed himself uh, and then yes. we get like tearful tom cruise reading the letter and it's in you know brian brown's voice and it's you know my dearest brian you know blah blah right. blah 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 and then there's like you know was it Con conlin's law you know don't listen to him because he's always been full of shit and then it's like ha 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 ha, ha. and then i kept wondering <laughs> right. like is the right. ha 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 in the letter is tom cruise reading that part <laughs> too <laughs> or is he just imagining what it was like? I don't know. And then it says, ha, 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 ha. I'm dead now, by the way. Bye. <laughs> Peace it's out. such a bizarre movie. Um, you know, that poem at the end, at the, the the opening of the bar, Flanagan's. Oh, I guess maybe. Is that why the bar's not open? Because it's like a big declaration. Like, I finally opened my bar that I want to yeah. have in every suburban shopping mall, which I was like, oh, you know what? That would have been really successful for a couple decades, and they'd all be gone now. They'd yep. all be gone. <laughs> yeah. True. Um, but the ending, the, the name of that poem was Flanagan's Advice to His Unborn Child, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the wedding song when they're dancing and singing is When Will I Be Loved by yes. the Everly Brothers, right? Yes. That song is not on the soundtrack. And I mean, I, I legit like that song. Yeah. That's and every right. time, Everly Brothers are great. Yeah. Yeah. And every time it comes on, like if we're out, um, if I'm out with like the family or whatever, if it comes out in like a restaurant or whatever, wherever, I always go into full cocktail mode and then I try to make uh, my husband um, harmonize with me. Um, <laughs> do you read, do you, do you, do you announce a poem to the whole audience, everybody yeah. in the restaurant? <laughs> Who here has seen Cocktail? Let's talk. <laughs> no. But that song is not on the soundtrack. And do you know what other song is not on the soundtrack? Addicted to Love. 
oh, are you right about that? Yes. I don't, I don't know. I'm they just couldn't get the rights to that. Yeah, I'm like, that I song was addictive. totally popular. Right, which is crazy because that was huge, right? So how is that? On a, no, but you know what else? Shelter of Your Love by Jimmy Cliff, which is the what? waterfall scene. It's the love theme of the movie. Why is that not on the soundtrack? Right? Shelter? Isn't that the waterfall? I mean, there. Yeah. that's... Yeah, because it comes mm-hmm. up a couple of times. Right, I know. that it's, And then there's like a sad instrumental version too yeah. like what in new york city i think or like looking at her through the window and stuff yeah um yeah but those i just i'm shocked that those songs were not on the soundtrack all those soundtracks used to do that a lot right yeah they, they couldn't get the yeah. rights or for whatever reason they leave off a couple um yeah i'm a little disappointed they didn't just get like a whole like cocktail themed soundtrack kind of like prince did for batman yes that's what they should have done I would have liked Prince doing cocktail. Yeah. What would that have been? That would have been a lot of <laughs> cocktail <laughs> dance. That, that waterfall thing would have taken on a whole new thing. Capes. <laughs> you know, I, I read that they got Maya Angelou to write all the poems in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's why there's that's why they're so good. <laughs> the budget for this movie was um, let's see. According to Wikipedia, which you know could be wrong, the budget was about twenty million, but it made one hundred and seventy-one. Yeah. It's million. One box of those off. movies, because Tom Cruise is a star. It had a hit song. He is the and biggest right. star. Movies, yeah, right. you could play that anywhere in the world and dub it, and it won't. You won't miss a thing. You know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. there's not, nothing deep going on here, but it has a full story to it. My sister was in. Um, Spain for most of the 90s and she was just saying there's certain American stars that people will just go see there's oh just, yeah it right doesn't matter yeah and this is I, I bet this p- movie is perfect for that it's a gr- I bet this is a great airplane movie like if oh. you're just oh. killing some time right. on a flight somewhere oh I think gosh. this would be amazing yeah. yes and think about the year so I mean Tom Cruise is coming off of Top Gun right yeah. mm-hmm. and then at the end so this came out in July of 88 and December of 88 was Rain Man. Yeah. So, like, yeah. his yeah. career at that time, just, there. I mean, there were few people, I think, who um, was at, at there. I mean, there were so many big actors at the yeah. time. I mean, it was such a star system in a way. People were yeah. just going, any, I'll go see any Eddie Murphy, any Bruce mm-hmm. Willis, any yeah. Tom Cruise. But Tom Cruise was, like, one of the young younger ones i feel i feel like maybe i'm wrong maybe he was the same age as all those other guys <laughs> he's a little younger Anyways, because you know this movie i found something that said like the ages of all of them when they filmed this um i think elizabeth Shue was 25 for some reason i figured she was in her 30s mm. same with tom cruise's character i don't know why i had these ideas in my head and brian brown was i think for early 40s maybe oh when my he filmed- gosh and I would have told you he was 60. Like, and, and I'm not, not because he looks older necessarily. I would it's have just, guessed in his 50s. Yeah, it's right. It's just like a mental, like a, how old you are when you watch something and you know yes. the character's yeah. older. Than you. So then they're like always older than you. Yes. <laughs> well, this is also when Tom Cruise, at this time, Tom Cruise was married to his first wife, uh-huh. Mimi yeah. Rogers. Oh, yeah, yeah. And at this time is when he starts studying Scientology and he starts uh-huh. getting into it. So... There's a I lot was going never on with happy Tom. with that marriage, by the way. As a, as a child in the 80s, um, <laughs> oh, and really? a fan of Tom Cruise, I was not a fan of their, yeah, no, I just thought, like, she just didn't do it for me at that time, and I feel bad about that now, you know? But at the time. At the time, yeah, you were jealous. At the time you thought. Brain. <laughs> at the time you thought he was really in love with Elizabeth Shue. Yeah, the, it should have happened. The Brian and Jordan <laughs> will be together forever. <laughs> well, and then Mimi Rogers gave an interview where I think, oh, wait, no, maybe I'm wrong. Was it Mimi Rogers or was it from Top Gun? I can't remember, but I thought it was Mimi Rogers who, like, after they divorced, said he was a bad kisser. I could be wrong on that, though. <laughs> but I was, said like, he wouldn't have sex with her. Oh. Like, yeah. he, he became very monastic. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if she's still in Scientology. I think she got out of it. She's the one who got him into it, though, right? Yeah, she yeah. she does, and she was friends with like Kirstie Alley and with like a bunch of people that got him into it. And okay. now he's been in it pretty much ever right. since. I know. See, I have to suspend all of that. Like, I have to just ignore all mm-hmm. of that to enjoy to enjoy the movie, uh, to enjoy anything, right? Because I mean, <laughs> earlier 
earlier you mentioned Mission Impossible, right? And I mean, yeah. I I quote, I, I like reference in a very genuine way Mission Impossible movies, specifically um, Ghost Protocol um, and Rogue Nation, but I reference them all the time, <laughs> like in a, in a real I, genuine, not being funny way. <laughs> no, I love those movies. I think he's yeah. really exciting in them. But then I'm really upset with him being a part of a cult that like right. has people yeah. right. that are being abused. I'm right. sorry. Right. And he yes. he could go, but you know, he's also like one of those sheltered people. He doesn't have to go on the internet if he doesn't want to. Mm -hmm. I'm right. sure he doesn't answer email. I'm sure he doesn't know how to use Instagram or anything. Like I'm right. sure he and that's a way for him to not have to know things. And so that's another right. part of me that gets irritated. Like you're an adult, learn something. Right. And I never got the impression, like I would, okay, so again, here I am outing myself. Like I read every single, when he was People Magazine's sexiest mm -hmm. man of the year, because my mom subscribed to People. And even as like, seriously, as soon as I could start reading, like very young age, I would look at her People Magazine and then I would read them front to back all the time. Like I look at my own kids who are in grade school now. I'm like, they would never pick up People <laughs> Magazine and read the whole thing ever, <laughs> ever. But I used to do that. I also used to re read the TV guide from front to back. I did that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with, you know, so when he was Sexiest Man of the Year, oh, I, I loved that cover. I can still see in my head what picture they used on the cover. And so I always got the impression, though, from reading interviews and watching anytime he was on TV, oh, my gosh, that he was a really nice, like, genuinely nice person. I think he genuinely, like, seemed to care about others and doing good, right? But he was also maybe not the smartest. No, he's not the sharpest tool that's, in the shed. That's the impression I always got. How yeah. dare you quote Smash Mouth on this show, <laughs> <Margo>. <laughs> No, he, uh, no, I've always had that, I had had that kind of feeling as well. And I think a lot of Scientologists, the ones that leave, like uh, Leah Remini, like that, they say that when they're in it, they're told all the time, you are gonna help save the world, the planet. What you're doing is so important. So I think he's kind of dumb and egotistical enough to think like, well, yeah, I've got to learn this because it's only gonna right. be me, I'm, you know? And, he, he, you know, look, we could all be what's, victims of flattery. Well, and what's the personality type of the person who then maybe genuinely like falls for that and really truly thinks, oh my gosh, I'm going to help change lives. I'm going to make things better. Right. But then after many years and they are presented with legit information that it's, that what they believed was wrong, there's those certain personality types who can't let go of that. Like it's right. too much, is it ego? Is it just truly like, I don't want to admit I was wrong or I'm still not smart enough. I, you know, what is it that they can't say, oh my gosh, I was wrong believing this. I'm so sorry. I'm going to, you know, try to make amends for it or whatever. I think about that with just cults in general. And even now, when you look at our that's what world I, with people, believing yeah. theories that's, and stuff, that's what's going on right now. Right now, right. it's just people who like admitting that you were wrong is like right. the hardest thing to do. Right. Right. It's yeah, that's exactly yeah. what's happening. It I feel like if, if we can just somehow figure out how to teach that, that it's OK to say, oh my gosh, I believed this thing for 10 years. It turns out I was wrong or I did this thing. It turns out I was right. If we could just somehow teach that, I feel like things would start to get slightly better. Mm -hmm. Right. I hope, I don't know. That needs, uh... <laughs> yeah. Um, going back to the movie really quickly. Yeah. Do you know, cause I did not know, despite seeing this movie 5,000 times, I did not know it was based on a book. <laughs> oh, I didn't either till I started reading. I didn't yeah, either. Yeah. yeah. The screenwriter, what? yeah, he based it on his book. He was a, a bartender Emma? in the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. There's remarkably, by the way, no drugs being taken. And I, I'm telling oh, you, somebody who went to New York City bars, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of drugs. <laughs> yeah, I just, I was like, oh, there's, this is based on a book? What? This is, okay, I've never, you know, I never knew that, so I didn't have a chance to read the source material. It might be interesting, or not, or not. <laughs> Also, this movie sometimes is so poorly directed. There's just scenes where like like he's doing on all the job interviews or he's getting the drinks and people are all of a sudden just screaming directly into the camera. Oh, yeah. I need my beer now. You yes. don't have experience. But like it's yes. so cheesy and bad and like not original. Yes. Yeah. Ugh. Some of the the choices made seem like a kid's movie or just like it, it seems like the entire yeah. thing's going to be this like dumb comedy, right? And right, 
that's why this movie's such a, then it's like well then there's suicide and pregnancy and the friend that drinks too much and almost dies on the beach or but then it's, it's funny because in the ambulance she's like i'm gonna puke oh you know that whole like little yeah. thing waterfalls, yeah. waterfall sex yeah you know tickling by the way New, t- all New that York tickling. Deli. <laughs> yeah so from now on whenever i see someone with twins i'm gonna be like waterfall sex <laughs> <laughs> I'll walk up to him and be like, waterfall sex, huh? Mm-hmm. I've seen cocktail. I know. <laughs> we know how that works. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you think Brian you and have... Jordan are still together? No. <laughs> I love your reaction, Margo. You're like, LOL, no. <laughs> Not a chance in hell. She gets her shit together at some point because he's going to be at that bar all the time working. He's going to fall for some dumb waitress or mm. dumb whatever that shows up because he's got now two kids and a wife. I think uh, her parents are going to start to pay the, pick up the slack and pay the bills for things. And she's going to realize, I made a really huge judgment call here. <laughs> I, I'm i not th- even 30 yet, but I can, I'm adorable. I can get anybody I want. I'm out. And then she goes <laughs> to Vegas. Maybe and Flanagan's bar starts, um, you know, like being the sponsor for the little league teams and then their kids play baseball or something and he's their <laughs> coach. And then I don't know where else to go with that. I don't think. Yeah, no. <laughs> See, I'm gonna... thinking this is in the same cinematic universe as leaving Las Vegas and that she leaves him Ooh. and goes to Vegas. Oh, and hangs out with Nicolas Cage until he dies. Yeah, I have been I actually really been wanting to rewatch that for a while because we were on a Nick Cage yeah. run for while yeah. here but we we didn't rewatch that so it's been on my mind <laughs> it's a downer of a movie yes oh yeah gosh. no way it's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> it also has kokomo in it no it doesn't it really doesn't <laughs> oh. how, how great would it be if it had don't worry be happy <laughs> As Elizabeth Shue's walking down the street yeah. as a prostitute. Oh, that movie. <laughs> I don't think I could rewatch it, actually. I think it's too much of a bummer. Mm-mm. Maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. that's my answer to everything. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe next, next year. year. That's a good... Yeah. Actually, I think I want that on a t-shirt. Let's arrange that. Maybe next year. <laughs> Maybe next year. That's a good idea. I'm going to write that's it. That's a really good idea. Yeah, write it down. Write it down. Do that. Uh, you make, let's, we can figure that out. Someone can make the shirts. With us, for us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm like, I'll put it in the merch shop. Maybe next yep. year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you next I year. I mean, this year really has been such a downer. Like we, we were talking earlier. Yeah. Um, it's just one hit after the other. And, and then if there's like a moment of like happiness or hope, the next day something awful yeah. happens. You yeah. Know? Which brings us to our bummer, yeah. which was last night. Chadwick Boseman died and I know we both we all wanted to talk about it on the show because it was such a punch in the gut yeah Yeah. like so unexpected and he just he was so awesome like such a move he was like he was gonna be like I just felt like he was one of those actors that we were gonna be watching for a really long time yeah and that he would always be super awesome that he was going to win like a million awards if you care about yes. awards. Like he, he seemed like that actor to me, like, right. You know, just and a leader and a leader in yeah. other ways. Like he used his voice um, for important and worthy things. And um, even some of the videos that are going around now that, you know, maybe we didn't all get to see him on every single press right. you know, tour or interview or whatever. It's more incredible than I even knew. And I thought I, I already thought he was amazing. Yeah. Right. Um, he just was unique and special and, and he radiated strength and yeah. bravery. And that has, I'm not even talking about the parts he played or the fact that he was doing all these amazing things while he was sick because we didn't know that, but he yeah. still right. was radiating that, you know, that energy. I just, yeah, it's yeah. really such a huge loss. I know we were, you know, texting like cocktail jokes and then all of a sudden, you know, we all just felt yeah. right. It was like knocked over. It was- yeah, we were exactly just knocked over, just a punch in the gut because he, and then I just went down like a whole rabbit hole and I know Margot did too because she was like mm-hmm. posting videos and stuff, but also just the way he embraced playing Black Panther, doing the Black Panther character and like 
how he interacted with the community around that movie or just yeah, you know mm-hmm. and then seeing him even like and at children a war- yeah or walking the red carpet or whatever and he would do the like wakanda forever and like how he embraced that yeah. It, yeah. it wasn't someone that was like well i don't i'm trying to think of the right way it's like i feel like sometimes actors sign up for these movies and then they try to distance themselves from right from these kind of characters but he didn't right. he really embraced it and, right. and he was just so good. Like, he played Jackie Robinson. He played James Brown. He played Thurgood Marshall. Like, it takes a special person to play these kind of special people. And he was that. He was right. just, yeah. what a, my husband walked, uh, he was he was in draft day. So, of course, I thought of Adam Risky. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. right? My husband walked into the room and was like, Chadwick Boseman Dante died. Mac, and I was like liar (laughs) i'm like you're not funny and he's like no it really happened and he's like you know prepare yourself and i was like (laughs) when news like this comes out right and depending on what platform you're paying attention to at the time or whatever you're doing or you know um yeah the way that my husband said wait Oh my, oh my gosh. And he kind of acted this way. And then I, you know, that always makes me nervous. I'm like, what, what? Cause I have yeah. no idea. Right. Did like family text you? Did what happened? Like something. And so he said, I, this can't be true. And then yeah. and he said it. And I was like, he goes, no, this, this probably, this can't be true. Like, it, because there have been times before, right. Where something comes out and oh, it's, sure, yeah. yeah. like, and so we really were in disbelief for, you know, like 10 seconds before then he said, oh no, this is, this is really this has ha- this happened. I, we were just in shock, you know. And it's it's <sighs> crazy to me that he was doing like chemotherapy and all these surgeries for colon right. cancer while he was making all of these movies. Like, yeah, right. You know, as, and doing the press for them. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, as someone who has gone through surgeries and chemo, I'm like, I can't comprehend the strength it must have taken to do right. those things like yeah i'm like that's insane i remember like going to like a baseball game when i was doing chemo i was fucking exhausted it took me like three oh. days to recover and, oh, he, wow. and he's out like filming things like black panther like it's super right. physical it's and it, i don't know if anybody knew do you do you mm-mm. get the impression that anybody even knew on set i don't think so because think- that's like, if you are going to be doing that sort of grueling work, but the people around you know, and so maybe they're, like, helping you out or cutting you breaks or who knows. But if no one knows, that's even a whole other layer of how you have to you have to keep up every part of that energy, right? Mm-hmm. Like, even just mm-hmm. going in your trailer for your own personal break, you have to, like, present a certain way, right? I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, it does. But. It's, I wonder uh, if the studio knew because they always have to do like a physical before you can do those things uh, just in case yeah. something like this happens. So I, I'm sure maybe some people knew, mm. but he ha- he was at stage three and then he's been treating it. And then it just recently turned to stage four. So and he awful. also just recently got married oh, because he realized, oh. I know, I was like, oh, fuck for God's cancer. sakes. Fuck cancer. I read. Yeah, I know. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, so awful. He was such a movie star. Yeah. And he was funny, too. Like, Margo, you shared the video of him on SNL where they did Black Jeopardy. <laughs> and there's this amazing clip. Raisins. Yeah, right. she'll put something stupid in it, like raisins, you know? And, like, and just his delivery is so, like, what was it? Like, oh, hell no, Karen, keep your tasteless <laughs> potato salad at home or whatever. Like, the delivery is so funny. Like, he's just such a talented man. It's such a huge loss. Such yeah. a huge loss. That makes me sad. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, it's just awful. And it just feels, it feels unfair. It feels wrong. Mm -hmm. Anytime somebody passes away, it's awful and a tragedy. And, you know, even if it's someone who, let's say you don't, you know, agree with politically or something, it's still awful. But this feels uh, just so wrong, Mm -hmm. right? Like, so Like, I don't know. He was so young. Yeah. 43. And just was representing um, something that so many like people that we in America are trying to fight for. And um, 
he just, yeah. I don't know. It feels wrong. It feels like something was stolen from, from everyone. I don't know. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a really good way of putting it. It feels like someone stole from us. It's right. Cause I, yeah, I know that sometimes people say, Oh, you don't know this Hollywood actor. Why should you be sad? It's like, well, because I care about people. And if yeah. someone's a very good person, I care about the world losing that, you know, like, yeah. That's, anyway right and they're so. artists and their art speaks to us yeah. and it's a part of us right. and we enjoy it and when they're not here anymore it's fucking sad yeah right, right. <laughs> why are you sad that this person you don't know died because i'm not a monster exactly <laughs> that's such a rude question <laughs> right such a bullshit question it is so weird uh. um sonia yeah i don't know if you pick top movies for me i did because I also picked top songs. Can we do that? Like end on a happy note? Yeah, let's end on a yeah. happy note. Okay. Um, all right. So number 10 was, this is, oh, I'm sorry, top 10 movies of 1988. Number 10, uh, The Naked Gun. Yep. I remember. I fucking love The okay. Naked Gun. And I often <laughs> list it as my favorite baseball movie. <laughs> ah. uh, Die Hard. Love Die Hard. Oh, Yes. The, this this is a really good list. Uh, Margot has thoughts and feelings about this movie. Big. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all haven't heard the episode of Margot and Patrick on F this movie talking about Big, do yourself a favor and download it right now because it's really, That's really so good. Funny. <laughs> Cocktail was one of the top ten movies, obviously. Wow, wow. A Fish Called Wanda. Great movie. I haven't seen it in a long time, though. I haven't seen I it in a long holds time. Up. But... It, we rewatched it a couple years ago, and I think, it, yeah, we saw it actually in a theater when we uh, went to Austin. I think they were doing a special screening of it um, the, uh, when we went. We just went to Austin in summer of 2019, and so it was five years before that. So 2014, I think we went to special screening, and yeah, it was fun. I love that movie. It's so, it is really fun. Uh, this one's not as fun. Rambo 3. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've seen Rambo 3. Some people I don't might. think I have either. Some okay. people might think it's fun. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, number five, <laughs> Twins. Oh! Uh, yep, yep, yep. That's from Waterfall oh, Sex. <laughs> <laughs> number four is Crocodile Dundee 2. Not as fun as the first one. I remember really liking the first one. I think the first one. I think the second one doesn't really hold up. I don't think I saw the second one. Yeah. And then the uh, number three is Coming to America. Great movie. <laughs> Coming yes. to America. That's Gosh. on our list. Yeah. Oh, another one of my favorites from that time and ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> number two is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Ah, Great movie. Yes. What Which- a year. That, it's a good year. I love yeah. that. Actually, I need to show Calvin who framed Roger Rabbit. I think it would I think it would blow his mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then number one was Rain Man. Oh my god, yeah, that movie was very popular. Isn't yeah. that crazy? I remember to me at that, that time. That movie yeah. would be the number one movie of the year. That's um, insane. I mean, to me. And again, Rain Man, I know we talked about, you know, cocktail, the budget not being huge, and then they made so much money. Rain Man, according to on um, whatever I Googled, Rain Man's budget was twenty five million and it made three hundred and fifty five million dollars. Wow. Insane. Cause it's it's I this mean, drama. It's a drama right. like a drama's right. for, not the number one adults. movie. No. Yeah. Right. I miss I miss this time though when things could be for yeah, adults sometimes only, or for many different people. Mm-hmm. I, I have to feel like Rain Man, obviously, like, Buzz started growing with that movie, but Dustin Hoffman combined with Tom Cruise, right? Yeah. Think about the rise yeah. of, of Tom Cruise, and then Dustin Hoffman already is a star. I feel like just those names got people into the theaters. I think so, too. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Uh, so do you guys want to hear some of the top songs of 88? Sure. Yeah. These are some of my favorites. Uh Phil Collins, A Groovy Kind of Love. <laughs> yes. I love that song. <laughs> Billy Ocean, Get Out of My Dreams. <laughs> get into <laughs> my car. Get into love that song. <laughs> I, I actually do that song. Uh, I sing it sometimes around the house as a joke whenever I'm feeling like really cheesy. 
Like I sing it. I'll sing it to my husband. Like get out of my dreams. <laughs> uh, Tracy Chapman, Fast Car. Oh, that's yep. such a good song. Great song. Yeah. I love this song. Erasure, a little respect. I love Erasure. Oh my gosh, yes. I love and uh, and be, and and for Erica. Yeah, last one here is going to be Prince Alphabet oh. Street. I love oh that song. my gosh, yes. <laughs> Prince. I love yep. that song too. Thank you. I know. Yeah. All, everything you just named just brought me back. I mean, I know we're we all get nostalgic like that, right? But really, this is why art is so important and so great, right? It just connects yeah. us immediately. Like I just had like happy flashbacks to childhood in ways that like I just haven't had in a while because I haven't thought about it, right? But mm -hmm. I could mm -hmm. see like myself walking in my neighborhood with the sun shining, like just right now you naming those songs. Or, like, driving around, you know, or driving around like, you know, I was an age where I I'm being driven around by my mother all the time, right? Because I am a kid. So just being in the car and like even her loving that song, right? It's just, oh my gosh, love this it, love my, it. This was my first summer working at the movie theater. So Ooh. I'm thinking about, all that time I spent like slinging popcorn and like meeting new people. I was really shy. I was a really shy person. So it was like hard for me to, to talk to people and it's just like really coming out of my shell. So you're listing all those songs and I'm just remembering like, Oh yeah. I was like really starting to like figure it out. Like Aww. coming out of my shell at the time. And yeah, I was, it's so funny. Cause it's like, People are like, you were shy. And I'm like, and now I host like two podcasts and people can't, <laughs> and people can't shut me up. Like I talk so much. <laughs> I, I love it. I know I was going to say, oh, I can't imagine you being shy. But then I stopped myself because I, people always have ideas of us and they, we never know somebody's full complete picture. Right. Like, right. I, I remember having a conversation once in my office at work and I said something about being an introvert. And one of my coworkers said, you are not an introvert. And I was like, well, actually I'm very friendly, but I am very introvert. Like I just want to stay home and be by myself and like watch my movies and read my <laughs> books and you know, yeah. like, and so I, I know that's not the only, you know, characteristic, but I'm, I, so I call myself the friendliest introvert because I am very friendly and I I have almost like a problem with like wanting other people to feel comfortable so I will like force them like if if two people are around me and they don't know each other but I know both of them I will introduce them because I'm so hyper aware of the fact that they might be uncomfortable not knowing this other person who I'm talking to do you know what I mean yeah. I don't know <laughs> Oh, yeah. I remember when I met you and Patrick at dinner, you know, <laughs> we've oh been friends for years. So yeah, right. but immediately, like, as soon as you walked in, I could just feel like you were really going over, like, we are really friends, and we really know each other, and we're here for you, and it was so great. It was so much fun. That's Sorry, Sonia. So I wish you were there. I know, I know. <laughs> one day, Sonia, I know, one day. That was so fun. I, I love that we got to do that. And then I know you were going to come out to Chicago for a friend's wedding, right? I was going to, yeah, I was going to uh, be the, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? I was going to marry them. The officiant, yeah. thank you. But they had to cancel and they're setting it up for next fall and they're hoping next fall it'll happen. But we just, it's, you know, we just, I think everybody like, well, as soon as we were going into lockdown mode, stay at yeah. home mode, right. yeah. a lot of us thought maybe it'll be a month or two tops. So right. it's become this big shock, but I have a friend that's extremely extroverted. And I'm introverted like you are. And we had lunch the other day, a socially distanced lunch. And she's like, You're si you kind of super enjoy this sometimes, don't you? I'm like, oh, my God. I don't have to make plans. I don't have <laughs> yeah. to be a part of anything. I'm right. not being rude. Yeah. I can just stay home. Read you don't have to book. politely mm -hmm. decline. Yes. You know, I don't have to come up with an illness or an injury that you know, all of a sudden, <laughs> like, I could just... I was like, I kind of do. It's yeah. just like it's. I'm reading more than ever, and but of course, like I, people die. That's not cool. I want people to get back to work. I want people to get you know their lives going again. But there's some parts of this being home has been amazing to me. That's my husband. He's like, I've been preparing for this my whole life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I have 200 board games here. I'm totally fine. Like he's totally set, and I'm the one that's like, this is hard. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm so glad though, Sonia, that you have the podcast and you've always been somebody like the first time we ever heard from you or read anything that you, you know, even commented or wrote. 
I felt like, oh my gosh, this is just a, sen- a genuinely wonderful person that we are Aww. so lucky to know in any mm-hmm. way, right? And so it's just been so cool. And to see, to watch you guys like with your friendship is amazing. It's so cool. You know, it's because I was on Patrick's show yeah. and yeah. Sonia, we were talking about best friend's wedding and uh, Sonia like liked what I had to say. So we just started following each other on Twitter and uh-huh. social media is not always terrible, you guys. Right. You yeah, cool. that's how we there. met. That's yeah, how that's met. how the show started. Yeah, and I, when it when it transfers over to real life, even if it's not in person, but but you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, yeah, I love you, you're great," and and whatever. And then like, uh, you know, yeah. that doesn't always follow up with like an actual text or a call or something, right? But you guys, it's like so obvious that like this is a real friendship. It's not mm-hmm. just. It is. Yeah. We talk every yeah. day. Yeah. We I do. love it. I'm like, we text every day. And, you know, I've talked about this lots on the show about how, how much F this movie means to me. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's totally, it's gotten me through some shit. I brought it with me through, like, all my medical adventures. Like, I would just listen oh, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like, just sit there and just listen. And, like, it just brought me so much joy and, you know, I always say like Patrick's like my podcasting hero. Like I feel like I learned so much listening to him. And sometimes I worry that like I'm mimicking him or (laughs) I'm like, but I mean it with like the most like respect. (laughs) Yeah, no, of course. And I love it whenever you guys have Adam on your show. I love it how you always say like my podcasting brother from another mother. mother. that it's just like we are we're family you know like, yeah that's that's the other thing I also say that dorking out is kind of like f this movie's bratty little sister like I do feel like our shows are connected in that way and so I love having Adam on I love having you on it's oh, so fun when you're Adam. on and mm-hmm. we need to have Patrick back on actually yeah and he, he we were just talking about like him having you guys on so that's funny that you say that yeah that was yeah. oh my god it was like my dream come true to be on on f this movie i was so we nervous. went on there to talk about revenge of the nerds <laughs> like what the is nerd. a better idea than that it was so, so much fun that's perfect <laughs> we had such a good time okay before we go erica where yeah. can people find you on the internet sometimes when i have time i get to write and record um with you know at this movie and i'm on twitter and yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> she does these really great episodes with with Patrick where you guys revisit your top 10 lists of a certain year yeah. and it it's makes me fun. so angry at myself for not saving all my lists. Oh my uh-huh. gosh. I well I can't believe I didn't do that. Those are so fun and then sometimes you know there have been times where it's like well we didn't have time to rewatch every movie but like our last one we really tried to rewatch a lot and um, that it was, it's just so interesting to think about how you've changed as a person. Like, so the last mm-hmm. year we did was 2004, right? So mm-hmm. 16 years ago and, you know, now we have a, a different house and kids and, you know, different jobs or yeah. the same job. It's totally different position, whatever. And to think about how you see films now with the way that the world has changed and some still, like I was surprised in our last one, the way that a few films really still stayed with me and hit me. And I was so happy to be revisiting them. And then others, I was like, oh, I can't even stomach this anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, can, and, do you remember and, which ones? Like, um, well, one that like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless yeah. Mind. I actually was worried. I'm like, oh, have I built this up in my head over the years? Because it's been a while since I've seen it. Maybe it's gonna be too cutesy, quirky, something, right? And I actually really still loved it. Oh, but then, good. That's good. One movie that we rewatched, Spanglish. And there's lots of good about Spanglish, but there was something about, and I even said, like, maybe it's the pandemic that, you know, when you watch movies during the pandemic, there's a different feeling sometimes, but I couldn't, there were a lot of things in Spanglish that had me, like, rolling my eyes and just kind of, like, groaning that I don't think in 2004 I was reacting Mm -hmm. that way. So, Mm. yeah, those are two examples, yeah. Yeah, well, you've seen a lot more movies since then, and the movies have changed, like, we've changed, so we're going to react differently right. to different things yeah and i and i try to be fair like a movie is a movie right like so it's not i'm i would never say oh and now it sucks or something like that right because that's not true or fair but right. but right my reaction to it like if i if i was watching it today for the first time mm-hmm. it's a different feeling than 2004 yeah so mm-hmm. but those are well, yeah thanks thanks for listening i appreciate it sometimes we're like we don't know if anyone's really listening or reading but Oh, well, you know, it's fun. So <laughs> I love those episodes. Margo, where can people well, find you? On social media, you can find me at Brooklyn Fit Chick, and that's mostly for Twitter and Instagram. 
And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And if you like the sound of our voices, we also co-host What a Creep at whatacreeppodcast.com. And every week we talk about a creep. And then we end the episode with someone who's not a creep. And I think the next one is going to be John Voight. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> He's a creep. Oh, I want it. I'm, I'm excited and to hear all about that. <laughs> it's what a disappointment he turned out to be. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you can find me at the Sonia Show.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter and Instagram, where I post pictures of my kid and bread. And you can find Dorking Out at DorkingOutShow.com, Dorking Out Show on Twitter, sometimes Facebook. And you can email us, I remembered, Margot, at DorkingOutShow <laughs> at gmail.com. And we'll send you some stickers. We have the cutest stickers. Cool. Actually, we need to send Erica some stickers. I need yeah, stickers. Yeah, yeah, for Rosie. Yeah. Okay. And for me. <laughs> for you and, yeah, you and the kids. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it. Thanks. We'll make it happen. And this was awesome. super fun. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about cocktail with us. Thank we, you we, for letting me dork out about a movie that is <laughs> terrible, but I still will watch anytime. <laughs> I will totally watch it again. That's why we exist. <laughs> so un until next time, everybody wash your hands, wear your mask, practice social distancing, don't have sex in a waterfall, and we'll see well, you next maybe. week. Maybe. I might. <laughs>